started coming towards us, knocking trees down as it came. There has been a lot of sightings and a lot of activity down here. At first it looked toward my car and then it started heading away. People seeing things are not being reported to authorities or to investigators. A stick about six feet long, about four and a half, five inches in diameter, he kind of caught it out of the corner of his eye and heard it whirling through the air and he kind of ducked and it hit him in the back. It's not a human as we know it, but it's not a ape as we would know it. Prospector Fred Beck claims to have shot a large, hairy, ape-like creature near Mount St. Helens in what is now called Ape Canyon. The miner's cabin was attacked at night with a hail of stones. They had failed to heed warnings from Native Americans who shunned the area out of fear and reverence for these alleged creatures. It isn't that I believe it exists. I've seen this with my own two eyes. It, it isn't a belief. It's a fact. I know it exists. I've seen it. It's there. It turned a non-believer into a believer that fast. I'm positive of what I saw. I, I don't think it could have been anything else. The Encounters team has come to the base of Mount St. Helens in Washington State in an attempt to discover the truth behind legends of these hairy giants, creatures Fred Beck and others knew as mountain devils. I believe there's a lot of people out there who have had sightings that are not getting the information out. Cryptozoologist by profession, and driven by her own mysterious encounter, Autumn Williams travels the world. Thousands of people can't have seen something that doesn't exist. All we need is proof. Sometimes at dawn, or the edge of dusk, there's a fleeting glimpse of an impossible sight. Do you have Did it? You get it? I see it. Let go! What's the range? The sightings are real. The technology cutting edge. Are you ready for mysterious encounters? All three. All three of them. All three of them. Three of them. date back hundreds of years and are plentiful in Indian folklore. But sightings continue even today, both deep in the wilderness and on the fringes of civilization. Eyewitness Gay Helgen. And I was headed out to my friend's farm in Graham. I was gonna farm sit for the weekend. And I turned off onto their little lane, which just goes by this church and has speed bumps, so it's going very slow. And I passed a man walking, and when I looked up, from him, I waved at him. When I looked up from him, I saw this thing in my headlights. And I saw the, a frontal view of this large body walking. I thought at first it was a bear, but it had shoulders. And I followed him around with my head and saw him silhouetted in the yard light behind him. And I could see bulging muscles, big shoulders, but he was all dark. There was no clothing delineated like it was on the man that I had passed. At first it looked toward my car and then it started heading away. It just was, had very large strides. I had to drive around the corner and stop at the gate and get out and I was terrified. But the dogs were there and the dogs seemed normal. So I got out and I unlocked the gate. I ran in the house and turned on all the floodlights and sat there and thought, wow. And I just felt this dawning awe and, and excitement, you know? And then I felt really privileged. It was neat. In a world of freeways, cell phones, and urban sprawl, it may be difficult to believe that an entire species of human-like creatures could exist here undetected. That is, until one sees the vast Pacific Northwest wilderness and the conviction in the eyes of witnesses. Autumn Williams is a nationally known cryptozoologist and field researcher 
a specialist in the search for as yet undiscovered species. The Encounters team and I are on our way to Ape Canyon to discover the truth behind tales of the mountain devil. The Mount St. Helens area has long been a hotbed for sightings. You're okay there. Here, these creatures are known as mountain devils. Native American tribe had a name for these creatures in their language. These names all loosely translate to devil. Miner Fred Beck claims that he shot a strange, hairy, ape-like creature. The miner's cabin was attacked, and the prospecting party experienced the wrath of the mountain devils. This amazing story, when Mysterious Encounters returns. Ape Canyon is located on the northeast slope of Mount St. Helens in Washington State, near Yakima. Witnesses have sighted upright hair-covered creatures in this area for hundreds of years. Each Native American tribe had a name for these creatures in their language. These names all loosely translate to devil. It happened in 1924 before I was born, even. The most famous mountain devil encounter ever recorded was that of miner Fred Beck in 1924. Fred Beck's son, Ronald Beck, recounts the story his father told him. I know it's true. It all happened. I, I'll give you my word, this story is true. Uh, many things stranger than fiction. And this is one of them. My dad, my uncle, my grandfather, and two other men were prospecting in Mount St. Helens area. And they built a cabin up there and father claimed, I guess, at it for several years or more before this happened, where they encountered with the uh, mountain devils. Get the gun! Friends. Those are the mountain devils. I didn't believe you before. They saw one first. I guess it crossed the canyon. Dad took a shot at one. He was expert shot. Uh, after that, sometime they, there was attack on the cabin, all right. It lasted most of the night. Rattling everything, jumping up in the roof and throwing rocks. They're gonna get us. I know they're gonna get us. They've stopped. The companions of his we were quite scared. What happened to them? Oh. We attacked on the cabin last all night until about the next day in the morning when it quit. That absolutely happened, and you either believe or disbelieve, I don't care. The body, which gave a its name, was never recovered. Rock throwing is common in eyewitness reports. It seems to be a sort of non-confrontational way of getting people to leave the area. Stories of actual physical violence are few and far between, and are usually in retaliation to some harm done to the creatures. Eyewitness stories like Fred Beck's are intriguing from an anecdotal standpoint, but what about visual evidence? On June 10, 1982, Walla Walla Ranger District employee Paul Freeman was patrolling the Mill Creek watershed when he had his first sighting of the large, hair-covered creature. Although subsequent harassment caused Freeman to quit his job at the Ranger District, he continued his efforts to prove the creature's existence. In 1994, he obtained this footage. Some believe the Freeman footage was a hoax, but there may be a secret hidden within the footage that Paul Freeman never noticed, or at least never mentioned before his untimely death in April of 2003. There appears to be two small legs, complete with articulating ankles, in this clip. Is this a young creature being lifted by its parent? Perhaps we'll never know. The video has been sent to experts for analysis, and I'm anxious to hear their conclusion. There is other evidence as well. Many witnesses claim to have recorded the actual vocalizations of these creatures. 
Longtime researcher Rich Grover brought the team one such recent recording. This happened uh, up near Stevens Pass, uh, April 19, 2003. The Encounters team is here to find new evidence of their own, and they have brought a wealth of technology to aid them in their hunt for the mountain devil, including an array of infrared cameras that will be strategically placed. This is live surveillance at its finest. These cameras can capture images in total darkness. A heat-sensitive micron thermal imaging camera will also be used in the area of recent sightings. This camera will detect minute temperature differences within the background, making it impossible for any creature large or small to avoid detection. It's a color camera with about a thousand feet of cable. Wow. This camera looks like it's long enough to go down that canyon. Check the ledges um, around the, the Fred Beck encounter site. It'd be interesting to try. Encounters team will also broadcast sound recordings similar to those provided to the team as evidence. And the team will deploy human and gorilla pheromone scent chips, all in an effort to lure the creatures into the camera traps. For quick and mobile surveillance, researcher Richard Knoll has installed a high-speed flash still camera and an infrared camera on the mountain bikes, giving the team the ability to cover large areas with stealth and speed.